G'day guys, welcome back. I'm going to do something really simple today. Well, simple as in colours. Let's do black and white. That's it. Nothing else, black and white. And I'm only using Floetrol. Two parts Floetrol, two one part global paint. So in my cups I have got 250 grams of Floetrol and 125 grams of global impasto. So that's the white and that's the black. I buy them in these big two litre bottles and then I just refill my little containers as I need them because they're easier to handle. But because I was adding so much, 125 grams of paint, I just poured it straight in from the, the big bottle. So the consistency of two to one leaves a mound. Mound on a mound, quite a high mound. So that's what I want. I don't want it too thin because I'm going to be doing ring pours. Um, I don't want it too thin. Otherwise my colours blend too much. So as I said, I just want black and white. Something a little bit more dramatic, a little bit, um, I don't know, sophisticated maybe. Just, just try some black and white. So I'm going to order, um, change the order up in my cups and um, see what happens. So I'm going to do, oh, I haven't put my tape on. I'm going to have to get my tape. I wasn't sure what sort of style to do. I might, I don't know that I'll just do straight up and down. I might go a little bit off to the side. But I have found with the ring pours, um, because obviously you're pouring in a circle, you always miss your corners. Well, you do a lot. So I'm going to put some tape on my edges. And what I do first, I'll show you up here. I wish I'd take this glove off, otherwise it it's going to stick to me. I should have done this off camera, sorry. Although some people might like to see it. So what I do is I fold my tape into thirds like that so that the bottom half is sticky and the top half isn't. And then obviously I put the sticky bit on the side of my canvas like so. And there we go. I put a little side catcher and that's how I do it. I just find it easier and I get a better result if I can keep some of the paint, as much of the paint on the surface as I can. It doesn't have to be perfect, just as long as you've got it on there and it's going to act to catch some of the paint. So there you go, that's it. Now, gloves back on. All right, I've been busy today. It's Saturday morning. It's 9.30 in the morning. And I've already done oh, three pours. I've been doing fire and ice. I've been playing with the fire and ice. Um, so yeah, that's what I've been doing. Got the day off to myself today, so I'll probably just pour all day. I don't have to do anything else. Right, let's put some black in. Mm, didn't really want that much. Anyway, it's all right. And then some white. So these colors are, as I said, quite thick. I don't know if I'll need all this paint, but I just made it up. Make sure I've got enough. I can always, it's just black and white. Now I'm going to use it somewhere else anyway, no doubt. Don't know how much I'm going to need. I'm figuring about 600, maybe 700 grams of mixed paint. All right, let's see what that does. And normally I pinch from this side where all the paint's gone in, but let's try something different. Let's pinch from the opposite side. Where's my middle? There's my middle. Let's do that, that one first. Ooh. 
Oh, beautiful. See, I'm getting really close to the surface so that I can control my swirls and they're not wobbly. So as the last of the paint's coming out, it's a little bit more mixed because it's been swirling around in there. So I'm going to get more of a gray. Let's stop there. Okay. That's looking pretty. Now, uh, the next one, I'm going to use white first because I did black first on that one. And so I'll start with the white and end with the white with this one. So I've got quite a few layers in that first one. The number of layers that you do also makes a difference to the look you're after. Okay, so that one's got the white first and the white last. And let's pinch that there on that side again. So I'm going to go close to the edge here. Because the paint spreads out so I do want it to spread towards the edge because I need my corners covered. Okay, so that one's got more white in it. Beautiful. Now I'll use this same cup again because I've got the white in there. And let's do some white again. And I think for the middle ones, I'm going to do something a little bit different. Let's keep going with the black and white for now for these. So the colour that you put in first will come out last. And the colour that you put in last will come out first. So this one's got more of a, a black centre and the other one's got more of a white centre. Okay. Now over here to this edge here. Try not to swirl it too much because that's what's making my sort of muddy colour in the bottom of the cup. But you can't really be helped as I'm turning this. The colour in the cup is mixing. It really can't be helped. The only thing I can do, and I'll show you on my next one, I'll change it up a little bit. I'll use both of these, actually, I'll get a fresh one because that's been used. So what I'm going to do is start with some black. So I'm going to do two. And I've done this before where I've done two little cups on the same ring and that just prevents some of the muddiness I find. And I'll show you, see if I'm right. What colour did I start with? I can't even remember. Did I do white first or black first? can't remember. Um, Here we go. So two smaller cups. Now 
Now this will push the paint apart, which is okay. So I'm going to go here. And then as it starts to muddy a bit, go with the next cup straight into the middle where I left off. And that just kind of helps prevent the muddiness I've found. So we'll let a little bit of it come through. Alright, now I need to do the same with those. I know I'm using a lot of cups, but I'm going to rinse them and use them again. Oops, that's too much white to start with. It's a little bit of white in the bottom. And then the black. So I'll do two lots of black and I'll do three of white and that will be enough. Okay, so same thing over here with this one. Pour one, it's only a little cup so I'll pour the one. I want that one to move over a little bit. This will make room for itself. It'll push the others over. And same spot. So you get a nice definite black and white when it's not so mixed. Probably should have done that for all of them. You can see the difference. Okay, so now I want to add some paint. Put some white down here. And some black up here. Tape's fallen off, didn't even notice. Don't fall off yet. I'm not done with you yet. I've got a little bit of white left. that up to there. Like so. I better hurry, this tape's falling off. It's okay, it's it's done its job. This will look nice. I won't be too kind of muddyish and grey. I mean, obviously, I'm going to get grey because I've mixed black and white together. Now, I need a little bit more white. I didn't realise I was going to use all this paint. I thought, no, nah, that'll be plenty. I won't use it all. But I might have a bit left for my next one. Oh, there goes my tape. Better get a wriggle on. Here. And a little bit up 
up here and then I better hurry up because I'm losing my paint off the side. Okay, that'll have to do. Okay, let's do this. So basically just straight down. This one's struggling a bit because I haven't got as much paint there. I'm trying not to drip into it. That would be awful, wouldn't it, if I had a big drip into it? Okay. That was my first ring that I did. I probably didn't put enough paint in it. Come back. In the first cup, probably could have put a little bit more in. And I'll leave that. And down we go. So just straight down, doesn't need to go to the side. You want to keep your lineal little patterns. as well let the paint flow over woohoo pretty I love it messy all right now I will give it a bit of a torch just to pop any bubbles. This may bring up a few little cells, which is okay. I don't mind the cells when I'm using the flow troll. I don't know that it's made a huge amount of difference actually, having the two smaller cups and pouring in the middle. That was these two here. It has got more black there, and I guess this is more stripey. You can see the white and black stripes, whereas these ones are more grey. So I guess it has made a bit of a difference, hasn't it? Now, let me just check my sides. Pop a little bit of paint there, and a tiny bit here. It's pretty much all covered, though. It's done a good job by covering itself. The tape certainly helps. That's done. I just need to do this tiny little corner here. And then that's done. What do you think? Do you like that? So just a different take on a, a tree ring pour. I've done brown ones, which look like timber, and I just thought I'd like to try just black and white. Black and white goes with any sort of interior. Doesn't matter what colour you've chosen for your interior in your home. Black and white tends to go with everything, really. Just going to wipe under my edges there. Okay, well, I'm pretty happy with that. My Sections are pretty even. Um, I guess I could even try and make them make my paint thicker, just so that I don't get as much grey. If if I made the paint thicker, the colours would stay more separate. So that's an option. I could I could try that. But uh, let's take you in for a close up and see what you think. The sides are really pretty too. Ring pores always look pretty when they go over the side because they stay in their, their little design. Whoops, that's a bit much. What's going on there? No, don't change the colour. Open there, open.
All right, that'll give you an idea anyway, won't it, of the close-up. I think it looks really pretty. I'm happy with that. You can do any colour you like when you come to do ring paws. It really doesn't matter. Any colour will do. I'd actually like to try one in um, red, black and silver. I'm just a bit worried that the red is going to go pink with the silver. I think it will, but I'll have to give it a try and, uh, and just see what happens. So, there you go. Black and white. Nice and simple. Alright, thanks for watching. I will see you for the next one. Bye for now.